groundwater, water tables, aquifers, there is a lot to understand as a builder. And whether you're building a coastal house like my buddy Wade Paquin or inland like I am, you really need to have a good understanding. On today's build show, master builder Wade Paquin, who builds in some crazy tough conditions, is gonna help us understand this topic. With that being said, groundwater explained. Let's get going. Hey guys, Wade Paquin with The Built Show. On this episode, we're gonna talk about groundwater. I'm sure you've heard that term, but what does it actually mean? And what's the difference between, say, an aquifer? Are we really standing on top of these invisible lakes and streams and rivers? Stay with me, we'll explain. So I'm down the pit. This is the footprint of a new custom home we're going to be building, footing start tomorrow. You can see the uh, excavated bank, the soil here. So there's a bank on my right and a bank behind me. So this is the corner. Uh, today's Monday. I was here Friday midday-ish um, checking on progress of excavation and something caught my eye. This very predominant orange line on the bank of the excavation. This is around the whole perimeter of the site here. Now I know because I've been taught this, so I have a trained eye to look for it, that that's an indication of high water table during high uh, water table or peak water table season, I should say. Why is it orange? Because those are iron deposits or rust in the water. So if you look for the, the, the uh, presence of the uh, rust deposits in the water, which is the bottom of this arrow, and measure from there to the top of grade where that grass is, that tells you what your water table is. So here, that's 30 inches. So we have a 30 inch water table. I called my engineer. I said, hey, Mike, you know, I saw some rust deposit. Looks like we have a 30 inch water table. He called the soil guy who was in the area. He confirmed, in fact, we do have a 30 inch uh, water table. Now, yes, oftentimes this is on the plan and we'll know what our water table is on this particular site. Uh, this isn't a very large home. It's a very small uh, lot. Um, and it just wasn't part of our uh, civil plan that it noted what the water table was here. So I saw this. I now know what it is. I now know that we need to be uh, very careful and diligent about how we're going to waterproof our basement. We do have a full basement here. Actually, we'll do a whole new episode uh, on foundation waterproofing with this project when we get to that point. But Water table versus aquifer. What's the difference? Why am I not standing in water now up to my stomach or my chest? Where, where's the water? Um, so let's break it down a little bit. Let's look at the two zones, your non-saturated zone and your saturated zone. Your non-saturated zone is where your water table fluctuates. The saturated zone is your aquifer, right? That's your presence of, of water at all times. Um, through cracks and voids in bedrock, in different types of sand and soils. Um, there's always water in those voids, and that water is pulled down to that point because of gravity, right? All water being pulled through our soils is because of gravity. It's pulling it down to the center of the earth, but it doesn't go that far because at some point the bedrock is non-porous, which is why your aquifer sits on top of the bedrock and creates that underground uh, lake or stream effect, even though that's not exactly what's going on, but that's how that aquifer stays in that zone. And then depending on the season, when you have a wet season or you know your rainy season, for us is in the fall and winter, we get a lot of precipitation, the air isn't warm, um, we don't have a lot of evaporation. So all that moisture and snow melt and ice melt, everything's going into the ground being pulled down through these soils in the non-saturated zone that have pockets in the soils and the rocks that are full with air, or oxygen. Um, so that's pulling the water down through. It's first allocated to plants and trees. And when the plants and trees say, hey, we're, we're good, we're full, we've, we've had our enough water for, for, for now, the rest of the water gets pulled down into the aquifer. And this is how the earth kind of uh, goes through that cycle. Um, so it's interesting why this zone, the non-saturated zone, is called the non-saturated or the aeration zone. Um, and I like to look at it as in capillarity and the example of using a uh, towel that is completely soaked from 
a faucet or uh, you know, a big bucket of water. What happens when you take a towel, you put it into a bucket of water, pour water on it and pull it out? It drips, right? All that water runs off it. So it's saturated at that point. When you wring it out to the point where it's not dripping water anymore, that is your capillarity effect, right? It's holding or retaining the moisture without letting it go. That's what's happening in our non- uh, saturated zone, our aeration zone, is that this soil, unless we're in a major drought and we haven't had precipitation, then that, that can happen. This can be very dry. But typically and normally, the capillarity here keeps this uh, level, this zone, moist enough to continue to feed the plants and the trees that rely on it. So when we are in our high uh, rain season, which is, like I said, fall through winter and into late spring, um, that water has nowhere else to go but down. Our trees and plants have used it. The water is basically has refilled, replenished the aquifer, and now it's rising up to this point. So why does it stop here? That is the point of the balance of pressure between everything above the water table, non-pressured and pressured. And what I mean by that is if you drill um, like a uh, domestic use well for water for your house or for irrigation or something along those lines, the well drillers will always drill into the aquifer because it's constant presence of water and it's pressurized. So when you have your well pump in that shaft and it's pulling out whatever, five, 10 gallons a minute, even if it dries out the shaft, it will refill the shaft because that water in the aquifer is pressurized. It's why you do not drill into your water table because it's not pressurized and it would take a very long time to replenish that well. Therefore, you don't yield the gallons per minute that you would ideally want out of trying to drill into a water table. So that's the difference between those two. Now, why doesn't the water go all the way down into the center of the earth, to the core of the earth? Bedrock at some point becomes non-porous. So the, the uh, aquifer sits on top of the bedrock. I like to use the example of taking two sponges and putting them on top of each other and pouring water on the first sponge. It's going to get pulled through your upper zone, your non-saturated zone, and down into the sponge that's on the bottom, your saturated zone, that's sitting on a solid surface. So the water has nowhere to go. So what happens to that lower sponge? It retains all the water, it holds it, it's saturated, it's wet, that's your aquifer. Below it is like your bedrock. Another example would be to put a piece of plastic between the two sponges and pour water again through the top of, uh, top of the first sponge. It hits that uh, horizontal break of plastic and it runs horizontally, right? It won't go down to the, to the sponge that's on the bottom. It's the same concept. That's why our aquifers and our water tables um, run horizontally and not vertically. So anyway, a little nerdy uh, episode, I suppose, but um, I just thought it was cool when you uh, get to see things like this on site and, uh, you know, trained eye. I've learned from some old timers over, over, over my years doing this that have really showed me all sorts of uh, tips and tricks. All right, guys, if you're not currently following Wade on Instagram, go check him out. Fabulous master builder. He's also been with us since the very beginning when we launched our website, thebuildshow.com, at the end of 2019. So go check out all his past videos. But how you know that Wade has a new video is by signing up for our newsletter. There'll be a link in the description below to sign up. My team's gonna send you an email twice a week that says, here's everything that's new on the site. Here's Wade's new video, or Lydia, or any one of our almost 20 uh, believe it or not, pros and build experts these days. We got a lot of great content, all free and all to help train you to become that master builder, master tradesman or woman. We'd love to have you come visit our site. That being said, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.